The last time we looked at my HP 97 calculator, it wasn't working. Well, nothing much has changed. It's still not working. But I figured I'd go through some of the tests I'd done previously, along with a few fresh ones, to see if we can get any closer to locating the fault. First off, we'll have a quick familiarisation with the main circuit board. Bear in mind that some of the earlier models had a different layout, so if you have one, it might not be exactly the same. Over here is the ACT chip, or to give it its full name, the Arithmetic Control and Timing chip. This seems to be one of the common failures on the HP calculators, and there was even a company producing a replacement chip, albeit not suitable for the HP 97 because it didn't support the printer. Next we have the PIK chip, which stands for Printer Interface Control and Keyboard Buffer. So from the name we know this one deals with the printer and keyboard. Then there's the CRC chip, also known as the Card Reader Control Chip. Again, the name tells you what it does. ROM0 over here appears to deal with the display. It's reasonable to assume this chip is working, because the display is working. All those zeros in the display still have to be driven by something, so for now I'll rule out stuff that drives the display. The rest of the ROMs are here. I don't know what individual tasks these perform yet. There's some gubbins here that makes up the power supply, and it's this section that's guilty of killing so many of these calculators. Or at least that appears to be the case. So now for some tests. When you power up the machine, the ACT chip receives a power on reset pulse to ensure it starts up correctly. This is a brief pulse of the voltage of VSS, which should be around 6.25 volts. So if I connect the ground of the scope to a suitable ground pin on the machine, I'll go for pin 12 on the ACT, and then connect the probe to pin 18, which is the reset pin. Then I'll use the second probe connected to VB, which is the battery voltage, to trigger the scope. So, here goes. I'll power on. And there's our trace. The bottom line is VB, and the top line is the reset pulse, which goes high, then gradually fades away as the capacitor is discharged. Following on from that, on pin 19 we can see an output from the ACT that goes to the CRC chip shortly after power-up, which appears to be doing what it should be doing. If we remove the second probe and connect a single probe to pin 20, we should see the sync signal that times the ROMs, PIC and CRC. And power on. And there we have the signal, looking as it should do. Continuing on to pin 21, we should see the RCD timing for the PIC and cathode driver. And power on. And there's our signal, again looking as it should do. There's a strobe signal that we should be able to see if I connect to pin 11 of ROM0. So I'll get that set up. And power on. And there's our strobe signal, looking just as it does in the service manual. On to the next test. There are another pair of waveforms that should be visible, again coming out of the ACT on pins 16 and 17, although I'll probably grab them from elsewhere on the board where it's easier to connect to. Phi1 and Phi2 should be visible on all chips on the main circuit board. So, power on. And there we have the two traces. From all of that, it looks as if the ACT chip is largely doing what it should be doing. So, on to the next test. There's not much I can do to test the printer and card reader, but I can check the home switch for the head position on the printer. So, if I connect the scope probe to pin 17 on the PIC, and manually move the printer head away from its home position, and then power up, the head is moved back to its home position and the motor turns off. And if I repeat that looking at the scope, you can see the trace briefly go high until the head reaches the home switch. So yet again there's a fair bit of life in the PIC, as it's the thing that's controlling the motor. So, what else can I test? I've already removed and tested all of the tantalum capacitors, replacing any that were off their specified values. And a YouTube friend suggested in the comments from the last video that I check the keyboard contacts. 
I'd kind of ruled out the keyboard due to the way the calculator just failed while it was sitting there turned on, but I'd be a fool not to check just in case there was a key stuck in the closed position causing the calculator not to boot up correctly. The keyboard uses a matrix, so you don't have 56 individual inputs. In fact, there are only four lines in the one direction, so if I test each of them, I'll be able to see if any keys are stuck down. We'll start off with KBE, which is pin 27 on the pick. And power up the calculator, and press the key on that line. Divide will do. And the trace is pulled down before returning to high so there's no keys stuck on that line. And repeat that for KBD on pin 26, and power on, and press fix. And again it briefly goes low before returning to high, so all good there. I don't need to bore you with the remaining two lines, but both KBC and KBA were also operating as they should have been. I'm kind of struggling to find anything else to test now. If I connect to the IS or instruction address bus, I'll take that from pin 7 on ROM1 and power up the machine. There's active data there, but beyond that I have no way of analysing it. Similarly, if I connect to the data bus, which is pin 5, and power up, the data is the bottom trace and it doesn't appear to be much more than noise. There's a faint sign of life, but it doesn't look right, and the peaks are less than 1 volt, so something isn't right. The slight hint of activity might just be an echo of the IS data, and there's actually nothing happening on the data line at all. So it's back to the drawing board with the HP. I won't give up just yet, but it's looking less likely that this one will run again, which is a pity, because it really was pretty amazing when it did work. Anyway, that will probably do for this video. I'll be back soon taking another look at the Electronica MC1103 to see if we can have any more joy with that one. If you've enjoyed watching, please like the video and maybe even subscribe to the channel, not forgetting to click on the bell icon so you get notifications when future videos are released. That's it for now, so thanks for watching and I'll see you in a future video.